Believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. If we would be assured of the coming again of our Lord and the resurrection, let our hearts be stayed on the following words. We would have you not ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as the rest who have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also that are fallen asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. But this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we that are alive that are left unto the coming of the Lord shall in no wise receive them that have fallen asleep. For he himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive, that are left shall together with them be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord, Therefore, comfort one another with these words.
to process around uh, once you exit the sanctuary. If you would head upstairs to the balcony area now as you process around, please, ma'am, please, sir. Thank you.
in humble submission to the will of the one who knows best. Yeah. Yeah. We gather today for the celebration of life. Brother Benjamin Franklin, known to many of us as Frank Wilson. To Miss Rita Whitney, to this great family, we say to you today that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And you will continue to be in our thoughts, in our prayers. We will follow the program as has been printed by the family. Zion will come with a musical selection, followed by the Old Testament reading by Reverend Venus Mongo, New Testament by Reverend William Wilson Sr. I will come to do the prayer of comfort. That's before I take my seat, uh, as I came to Zion Baptist Church of Southern Sisterita this week, Brother Frank was one of the first to welcome me to Zion because he co-chaired the search committee. So I talked to Frank more than I talked to anybody before I got here. And he welcomed uh, my family and I when we came to this great church. One of the things that we know about Brother Frank is that he was an avid golfer. Um, in fact, I didn't even get to beat him on the green. <laughs> Brother Doug, I'm sure he's over on Jordan playing some golf somewhere. As I take my seat, I could only help but to reflect that somewhere over into late Saturday night and early Sunday morning, Brother Frank prayed this prayer to the Lord as he and God were making their way to transition. It's a golfer's prayer. God grant that I may live to golf for another shiny day. But when it comes to my last putt, then I must humbly pray. While I wait at the 19th green, <coughs> And you see me from afar, you'll smile at me and judge that I have lived my life above par. God bless you quite.
love you, blessed family. And we are praying with you and for you. I will be reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God's word for God's people. Words of comfort from the New Testament, St. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. God bless you, family. Certainly it is the hour of prayer. This moment we can be like David and look to the hills from which cometh our help. Realizing that all of our help comes from the Lord. <coughs> Will you pray with me? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Eternal and all wise God, it's a given that a few of your children have come into your house of worship. And God, we come at this moment needing you like never before. God, we come with heavy hearts and with tears in our eyes. But God, we know that we can find comfort in your word that tells us to let not our hearts be troubled. Because if we believe in you, we can believe in God your Father. And God, you told us that you were going away to prepare a place. And that if you go, you will come again and receive us unto yourself. And God, we realize at this moment that the steps that Brother Frank took, all of us one day must take these same steps. Father, help us to be ready when you call our name. And now touch this family, God, in a special way, in a special amount, from his lovely wife to his mother to all of these children and even all of the siblings, God, in this great family. God, help them to know that even in the days and weeks to come, that God, they can look to you to be that solace and that comfort. God, they can look to the memories that were shared with Brother Frank and know that now that he is resting in the hands of Jesus. And God, we thank you, God, that when praying time is over down here, when singing time is over down here, when we close our Bibles and hymn books for the last time to study more no more. God, we just want a home somewhere in your kingdom to praise your name forevermore. And God, we want to hear you say those famous words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you rule over many. Father, have your way in the rest of this service. Touch a man servant that's going to bring forth the bread of life. God, give him wisdom and knowledge from on high. But most of all, God, in all that we get out of it today, Father, help somebody to cry, I yield, I yield, I cannot hold out any longer. 
but what must I do to be saved? God, thank you for his life. Thank you for the legacy that he will leave behind and the impact that he shared with each and every one of us. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Every glad heart shout amen. 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 And amen. amen. This time we'll have a musical selection by Miss Donna Adams, followed by acknowledgments and resolutions by Mrs. Sharon Lincoln.
afternoon. When we leave this earth, the love that we give it and receive remains behind to the light, the lives, and those we touch. Each memory a candle burning bright. Your presence will be missed, Sarah Todd. Thank you for your service and dedication, Shannon Hampton. With thoughts and prayers for the family, a wonderful trip home for Frank, Tom Schofield. Thank you for sharing Frank with us over the years, Melissa Cole. Frank, you will be missed at the McCoy Precinct and throughout our elections. Olivia, Ophelia Wright, BOE Chairs, Tarita and the family. Wishing you comfort in knowing how brightly love shines on from all of us. <coughs> Sometimes it's the little things that helped us cope with loss. A photograph, a passing memory, a kindness that meant so much that help us sustain us as we wander through new feelings until we find our reserves of hope and strength of hope. May you find a place inside where the thoughts and prayers and compassion of others bring you comfort. Gwen's Chapel Baptist Church, Pastor William Wilson Sr. In this time of sadness, may you see God in the faces of friends, hear him in their voices, feel him in the touch of their hands. May their help, caring, and sympathy reflect his love and kindness at this time when you need him most. With caring thoughts, Piney Grove Baptist Church, Elder Michael Poston, Pastor. For you and your family, extending deepest sympathy to you and the loss of your loved ones. Morning Star Holy Church, Pastor Tyler C. Newman. To Sister Frankie Cathcart and the family of Mr. Frank Wilson. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. And my Father's house are many mansions. St. John 14, verse 1. On behalf of Pastor John Goins and the entire church family, we like to offer our deepest sympathy in the time of your loss. While we are sat at the passing of your father, we thank God that you had the opportunity to share the joys of his life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalms 30, verse 5. On this 21st day of June, 2024, we express our love, sympathy, and understanding. You are in our thoughts and prayers today and the days to come. John Bowen, Senior Pastor, Love and Faith Christian Fellowship Church, Greensboro and Curtisville, North Carolina. <clears throat> June 21st, 2024, to the family of Brother Benjamin Franklin Wilson, we, the members of Zion Baptist Church, extend our deepest sympathy to the Wilson family and want you to know that our hearts are heavy as we gather today to celebrate and bid farewell to Brother Frank Wilson. I have fought the good fight I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award me to that on that day. And not only for me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Timothy 4, verse 7 through 8. Whereas it has pleased our Heavenly Father to transition Benjamin Franklin Wilson from this life on Sunday, June 16, 2024, to a sweet rest in heaven. And God shall wipe all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Revelations 21, verse 4. Whereas Frank, as he was affectionately called, joined Zion Baptist Church in 2018. Although not many years ago, he hit the ground running. He loved Sunday school, rarely being seen absent from the men's class on Sunday mornings. He was a member of the Finance Committee, a member of the Pastoral Search Committee, serving as co-chair, and served as co-chair of the Clarence Tucker Golf Tournament, where in one of his final assignments here on Earth, oversaw the most successful tournament ever, with 60 plus golfers teeing off on Saturday, June 15. Whereas he was a Zion Baptist Church trustee, 
having served faithfully and loyally once named to the ministry. He was ever present at most events and activities of the church. He will be remembered as one who understood the role of a trustee and embraced his role in being a good steward of the church's finances and helping take care of the building itself, making sure lights were turned off, the building secured, especially when he was assigned or just because he was in attendance. Whereas, Frank Wilson was a gentle giant of a man who loved the Lord, loved his family, and loved us Zionists. His infectious smile, love of athletics, and love for young people will always be remembered and emulated. Whereas the sudden and unexpected passing of our beloved brother in Christ is the will of God, and there is a human tie that has been broken and makes us sad. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, therefore, we bow in humble submission to the will of God. Rita and family, we encourage you to console yourselves in the hope of a great reunion that is promised to us through the master of all life, that you will see Frank again. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with the loud command and the voice of archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 17. Be it resolved that we embrace the Wilson family because all of us feel your loss. We cannot replace Frank, but we will attempt to show his love for you through our words and deeds. Today and in the days to come, if you will continue to rely upon him, who make no mistakes, we are confident as Christians that God will comfort our, your hearts. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to you, the family, and that a copy will be placed in the official records of Zion Baptist Church. So Rita, Daniel, Whitney, Frankie, Lisa, and the entire Wilson family, while we know your loss is deep, your sorrow is great. We want you to know that we share in your sorrow and are lifting you up in prayer. And when tomorrow comes, remember, in case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like us to do, in case there's a favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help see you through. May God bless and keep you. He wrap his healing arms around each of you and strengthen your faith and trust in him. Humbly submitted by the Zion Baptist Church family, Reverend Marcus Fairley, Pastor Elect, Sharon Mayfield, Assistant Church Clerk. May God bless you. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. This time we will have reflections, beginning with Deacon Emory Henderson, followed by Mr. Malcolm Allen, Mr. Roger Wilson Sr. This is Frankie Cathcart. First of all, was his family. 
And as I saw the day Redskins, I knew he was Redskins. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But the first passion that I want to talk about today is golf. Frank was passionate about his golf. He loved to play. He loved the people he played with. And I see many of them here today. He loved watching them on TV and organizing tournaments. <coughs> past six years he's organized our tournament. He's chaired the committee to organize our tournament here. And since uh, it started in about six years ago, this past tournament, you have to look no further than that to see just how much Frank loved golf and how much golf really loved him. Because this past Saturday, as Sharon said earlier, we had so many golfers that we didn't have enough carts. So some of the people that um, signed up to play didn't get to play. In front of one, he chose not to play so that others could. But I believe he enjoyed this tournament more than any of the others. Because just watching him on Saturday, he was in his element. The second passion that I want to talk about is the Rockingham County Board of Elections. And I've worked with Frank for the past four years, and I believe Frank has served for more than 11 years. And he's been chair, or he's been chief judge here at this site. And so, like I said, I've worked with him for the past four years because he was the one who recruited my wife and myself to uh, work with the Board of Elections. Now every election cycle, Frank has said that this is going to be my last one. <laughs> well, we talk, and he said, well, I'll do one more. <laughs> but little did we know, this past primary was going to be his plan. Now, if you truly want to honor this man that laid before you today, and I said this at my father's funeral a few years ago, if you truly want to honor him, vote. That's right. Go to the polls and vote this fall. That's the best way that you can honor him. Now, I want to put a little nugget in you. This fall, when election time rolls around, if you hear Frank's name called, or if you have a memory of it, just use that as a reminder that you need to get to the public good. The final passion that I want to talk about today is Frank's love for his church. Now, Frank started out coming to Sunday school. And we kept wondering, why didn't he join the church? He join us. Because he was working, he was doing the things that he needed to do. But he didn't for a while. And so Reverend Davis was a Sunday school teacher. And I would talk to her and she would say, he's coming. She said, he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> and finally, one Sunday, he came down and he joined us. Never slow down. Now, Pastor Farley, I knew Pastor, started a series on Bible study using the book, I'm a Church Member by Tom Raymond. In that first class, he talked about three different types of members. He talked about the country club member who pays his dues and expects to be served. We talked about the CEO member, which is Christmas and Easter only member. <laughs> and he talked about the biblical member. And that's what Frank was. Frank paid his dues and he served. So today, and we were supposed to do this Sunday, but Frank, Frank played a trick. This year, and each year, our men's ministry on Men's Day 
is our Land of the Year Award. And so on this coming Sunday, Christ was to receive that award. So at this time, I'm going to ask all of the men invited to stand and all of the recipients of this award who have received the back to come forward. Another instant, 
Uh, God uh, really messed up a hole, made a mess on it. And when we got to the green, Frank said, clean up on ourselves. <laughs> Frank always played for the right reasons, his love for the game. But more than his game, we appreciated his friendship. His last act was given 17 teams a lasting golf experience. Thank you, Frank, for your hard work and for your love for your fellow golfers. Thank you for the pattern you left us as to what a golfer should be. We will miss you forever, your golfing buddies. to be around, very easy person to talk to. Frank and I worked as supervisors at Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for approximately 30 years. Often, we would have conversation and get advice from one another concerning our job responsibilities. You know, sometimes it's just good to have a person you can talk to and talk in confidence. Many times at the family reunion, we would have good times cooking ribs, fish, and chicken, and laughing and talking about past history. He was a good father to his children. We had many conversations about softball teams, playing softball games, Ashton versus Cascade. <laughs> and if I recall correctly, Ashton at the last game carried the trophy out. <laughs> I was a part of Ashton. <laughs> Certainly Frank would be missed. He was a good man. And at this time I say to Rita and the entire family, we love you and may God continue to bless you.
remember being lost so many times, but he would always look at us and tell us, Rita, we were not lost because we had what? Gas. A full tank of gas. <laughs> but he would not stop and ask for directions. <laughs> Daddy taking us up to Ferris Stone Lake. Oh my goodness, it seemed like that was the dirtiest water. I'm sure it has improved a lot by now, but over 40 years ago, you know, it was just awful. But we seem to have the time of our lives just being with our family and being with Daddy. I remember being disciplined by Daddy. I can only remember him whooping me one good time. <laughs> Apparently, I was in elementary and a teacher told me she didn't like me and got in my face with her finger and they tell me that I told her I didn't like her either and I smacked her. <laughs> I can ever remember. It was unforgettable. And he also punished me, y'all, by not letting me mow the grass that oh. <laughs> In my teenage years, I remember seeing Dad faithfully go to work so much at Goodyear. I remember seeing him become a volunteer firefighter and a, then an EMT at the rescue squad. So there were scanners and radios going off in our house at all times of the day and the night. And he would sometimes just drop whatever he was doing and go and help save somebody. And y'all, as I was remembering this, I'm like, oh my gosh, God used that to save so many people's lives through those volunteer services. And so, I remember him telling me that he loved it so much that he wished Lisa and I, at that time, I think Daniel Whitney were probably too young, but he wished Lisa and I would get involved. Well, I will tell you that's not my calling, so I'm going to say good for Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to adult life, I remember seeing how much Dad loved his family, from his parents to his siblings, his cousins, friends, just he loved everybody being together. And you didn't come together on special occasions, especially the Wilson family reunion. He didn't hold his tongue to tell you that he didn't appreciate that. You know, he's like, y'all need to be there. <laughs> he loved to have his grandsons help him cook. They didn't always like it, like being in the sweaty sun at the, um, at, at the grill with him or that fish pot. But he loved to have them by his side. I was thankful when Whitney asked me to send her some pictures of Dad because I went back through my old books and realized how very present he was. He rarely missed our events, whether it was high school graduations or award ceremonies. It was college graduations of us, our children. Um, special church services, uh, watching the girls at dance recitals. Um, he was just there. And uh, recently we celebrated my son Elijah's graduation from high school. And again, he was there. And my husband was telling me how he just walked around and he was looking at all the people and how well the event came. And he told Rodney, how proud he was to see us doing something like that, bringing everybody together. And so uh, that's a blessing to hear, you know, when your father is thankful for things that, the way you're living or what you're doing. So um, dad even got a chance to walk me down the aisle and marry me off to this guy for almost 25 years. <laughs> A few years ago, right here at Zion Baptist Church, one of my favorite memories that I will cherish forever, right behind me in that uh, pool, I got to see my father ex express his outward, uh, outward sign of his faith and be water baptized. Amen. So hallelujah. <laughs> Lastly, my most recent memories of dad, Mother's Day weekend, we gathered at Aunt Ruth's house because she had that gift, too, of bringing people together. So we were there for a brunch, and as we sat around, Dad began um, 
asking us about different events, and we filled up his calendar telling him where he needed to be over the next few weekends to support the grandchildren. And um, and he, I guess he said, well, I'm going to fill y'all's up too. We're having this golf tournament. <laughs> and um, I said, okay, well, Daddy, I'll make a donation. And right then and there, I made a donation. And then he looks at me and he says, well, don't just send a donation. You need to come by. And sorry to all the golfers, but I'm thinking to myself, like, Daddy knows I don't do golf. <laughs> what am I going to do with this tournament? But sometimes you just need your family to be there. And so I felt an urging to make sure that I went. And I'm so glad I got to be there. Um, Dad was a little heavy-handed, so I got to get that last little heavy-handed hug, you know, and say goodbye and tell him I love him on Saturday. So that was a blessing. But the great joy that we have in his final hours is truly seeing him do what he loved to do. He helped to organize such a beautiful event that brought people together. And most of all, he got a chance to supervise once again. <laughs> what better way to celebrate Father's Day than to go home to glory to be with your heavenly Father? To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So we celebrate today, no regrets, hallelujah. Amen.
Remember, I want to begin these brief reflections by just thanking and praising God for blessing me to meet Brother Frank Wilson in this life and for giving to the world Brother Frank Wilson. It was only this week that I learned about the Benjamin part. <laughs> that amid my shock and sadness, I still find reason to praise God for allowing me to know and spend precious time with Brother Frank over the past two years and seven months. As I have been honored to serve as the interim pastor of this great church. My sweet wife, Doretha, who is out there, for 50 years, and I have been praying for you, for the Wilson family, and trying to deal with our own sense of sadness and loss. So I just want to honor and praise God for the Wilson family, especially Brother Frank's devoted wife, Rita, with whom I shared so many wonderful moments working in this church, and with whom he shared nearly 40 years of marriage. Working with Rita has been such a delight here at Zion Baptist Church. I just want to thank Reverend Fairley, the pastor of this church, for allowing me to come back and stand in this pulpit and share these reflections. Give honor to him, his family, and to all the clergy that are present here today. Their presence alone is a testimony to the impact that Brother Frank's life has had on so many people. I want to honor the extended Wilson family, the Zion Baptist Church family, and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Brother Frank and I had some things in common. We both graduated from high school in 1969, except he was 16 and I was 18. <laughs> that means I'm older. <laughs> We both talked about our mothers, who were 99 years old. He talked about his 99-year-old mom, and I would talk to him about my 99-year-old Brother Frank Wilson's absence will be profoundly felt for a long time. He was the kind of person, as has been said so many times today, whose presence you miss deeply when he's no longer around. And I'm certain he will be missed as a son, as a husband, as a father, a granddad, a friend, a trustee in this church, a member of the finance committee, the men's ministry, the men's Sunday school class where I would meet him on Sunday mornings, Haunt person for golf tournaments, poll worker for voting, brother in Christ. Brother Frank gave so much of himself in service to the Lord. From an earthly standpoint, we must acknowledge and experience the emotions of sadness grief, sorrow, and loss. These emotions are real when someone you love, who was such an important part of your life, is taken away. God understands those emotions because he made us. 
And we can own them today. And we can feel them. And we can experience them. We have to. And yet faith reminds us that these human emotions are not the only voices that speak during times like these. Just as the earth looks upward, heaven looks downward with different emotions. Heaven has welcomed another child of God into eternity. And there is a joyous reunion with family members and friends who have gone on before. The angels celebrate as another son comes home. Amen. Believers must hold on to this truth at times like this. The words of our Lord take on a fresh, enduring meaning when we feel such loss. Words that we find, for example, in John's Gospel. Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Words like that we have to hold on to in times like these. Paul's words in Romans 8 For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We got to hold on to words like that in times like these. And words that we find in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 and 2 from the Apostle Paul's pen. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, yes. we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we grow earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. And so today we have to do two things. We have to acknowledge and feel our grief. We have to do that. We must also do something else though. We must celebrate and be glad for Frank and where we believe he is right now and what he is experiencing. A little story might best illustrate what I'm trying to say. A son beloved by his parents and younger siblings turned 18. He had graduated from high school and been accepted into a great university. As the summer after graduation ended and his first semester of college approached, he had to leave his family, fly to another state for college. His family took him to the airport early so that he could go through security and be at his gate in plenty of time. As they reached the point where the family could go no further, they embraced him and said their goodbyes with tears in their eyes. The student felt bad seeing them cry and ask them to stop crying and be happy for him. And then the father explained, we are not crying because we don't want you to know. 
We are proud of you, and we want to see you go. We are crying because we love you, and we will miss you. So although they were sad to see him leave, they were also happy and proud that he had grown up, that he had graduated from high school, that he was moving forward with his life. This may be kind of where we are today. Because Brother Frank Wilson has graduated. Not from high school this time, not from a college or a university. But he has graduated from his earthly life and has been accepted into the courts of glory. We are sad and we may be crying because he had to leave us. But because we believe and we have hope, Lord have mercy. We are happy yes. that he finished his course, yes. Yes. fought a good fight, yes. and kept the faith. Yes. We are crying in one sense, but we are rejoicing in another because we are happy for him. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. We can celebrate that because he is resting at peace in eternity. We have to rejoice that he has shared his mortal body and put on immortality. That corruption has given way to incorruption. Somewhere there was a leap in his building. And his soul had to move. And in that same song, there's a verse that says, When I can read my titles clear to mansions in the sky, I'll bid farewell to all my fears and cry my weeping out. Yes, his earthly house may dissolve. He has a building yes. not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hallelujah! 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 God is still working.
and we will forever keep you in our hearts and in our prayers. As we prepare for the recession, we ask that you all remain where you are. As to allow the family to exit the sanctuary first, we ask that you join them in the, in the fellowship hall for the repast, after which we will travel to the Wilson Family Cemetery in Cascade, and we ask that you join them as well. Again, thank you all for coming, and may heaven smile upon each and every one of you.